Alright, so some of you that have been following me on Instagram probably know that I've been in Maui and I just got back. And this is what I took with me in terms of my drone stuff because I didn't really go there for um, FPV. I, I did want to do a little bit of flying, but I didn't want to take a whole bunch of gear. I was mainly there to relax and have a vacation. So I took my uh, modded light radio to, it says Express LRS in here. And I'll explain the whole magnet thing, which you might have saw, seen on my Instagram post uh, previously. I'll explain that later because I took this radio. I took this modified Mob Light 7, which I made a mount for the Insta360 GO 2. And here's my Insta360 GO 2. And you saw a previous video on this, which, by the way, uh, the sale's still going on. So if you want to pick up one of these... For 270 plus you get the ND filter kit and the free lens guard if you use my link in the description. It's um, black, obviously the Black Friday sale is still going on. I think it's going on until like the 12th to 14th of December. And I also took this here. This is my Hawkeye FPV monitor. And I just flew uh, with the monitor like this. I'll explain the magnet thing here a bit later, but I also created this little uh, sunshade, sunscreen, you know, for uh, protecting the, or, or, or blocking out the sun, and also acts as a screen protector when I'm putting it in the case. Obviously I took my ND filters with me, and a battery checker, antenna for the monitor, and battery charger and of course the battery that's on here and that is it for what I took and um, you'll see all the little clips and the footage I got from this while I was on my trip didn't get to fly that much because this thing is super light and um, apparently this time of year in Maui it's very very windy so this does not you cannot fly this in 20 mile an hour winds um, in Maui. It's just, uh, yeah, it's a no-go. Unless you are willing to just have your drone get blown away by the wind and say bye-bye to it. So, yeah, anyway, main the main point of this video is, you know, someone a while back asked me, um, I have an Insta360 Go 2, I want to... Uh, do some cinema whipping with it. What's the least expensive way of doing it? And I think this is probably going to be it. Now, if you um, already have an Insta360 Go to and you want to cinema whip it, um, this is probably the cheapest solution. Now, if someone else, if, if you think you have a even cheaper solution than this, let me know in the comments below. Currently, the Mob Light 7 is $81 from Maker Fire on the Black Friday sale. Um, I don't know how long that's going to last. I'll put the discount code in the description. Um, the regular price is like $90, so it's not that much of a discount, but this is already a pretty cheap quad. And, of course, you do have to convert it, so um, you're going to need my STL, which is linked down in the description. It's on the Cults 3D website. 
And I did also swap the props out. So these aren't the stock props. The uh, HQ props are a little bit more efficient, but they don't provide as much power. So I switched to the gem fans. And uh, so uh, with the HQ props with this much weight, you're um, going to be in the 50 to 60% throttle range. Whereas when the gem fan props, you're going to be in the 40 to 50% throttle range, which is more reasonable for flying around. Of course, you can make adjustments to your mid throttle in beta flight if you want to adjust that. But um, I also switched to battery. I think the stock recommended battery is the 450. And I am now using the 720, which is basically the same dimensions as the 450. It's just longer. So it fits the tray here. It's a very tight fit. It's a little bit thicker, but the same width, which is the important thing. So it will slide in here. And you do have to be careful of the motor wires. So I took all the motors off, twisted the wires so that they're not loose. You don't want to get that snagged in here when you want to be careful when you take put the when the when you slide the battery in anyway because the USB port there is on that uh, this one little rail here and you want to make sure that you don't push the USB port too much otherwise it will break off so it does fit you just have to kind of finagle it in and be very careful about that also, I did modify the rubber grommets that the flight controller is sitting on there. I made them a little bit shorter, so I cut off the bottom so that they would, the flight controller would sit a little bit lower. And the standoff on the frame here will pop up a little bit so that the um, print itself will go around that standoff and will be held in by that screw. So that's what I did. I think it's optional. You don't really have to do that, but that's what I decided to do. I made the hole a little bit bigger so that if the standoff was actually holding the print in place. And then you can see here I'm using an Express LRS receiver. This happens to be the PP, but I think the EP2 uh, or whichever one has the SMD antenna will work as well. I am using UART1, which is on the bottom here. As you can see, very difficult to solder. The reason is I still wanted to use the onboard video transmitter. See the video transmitter antenna there. Uh, it goes up to 200 milliwatts. And uh, UART1, which is available to solder on the top here, these blank ones here that you see have no solder on it. Uh, but UART1 is being used by the Smart Audio for the built-in video transmitter, and you can't move that as far as I know. Um, if someone knows how to do that, maybe with some resource remapping, let me know in the comments below because that would be obviously easier to uh, resource remap and then use UART1 here or UART2 for your Express LRS receiver or some other alternative receiver if you want to do that instead of the built-in uh, FreeSky D8 and then uh, put the smart audio on the uh, other UART which is on the bottom which is what I use, which is what I sold her to. So you can see here super tiny pads on the bottom you're going to need some pretty good skills in doing that soldering if you want to do that and then i also as you notice here I shortened the battery lead because once the battery is in here like this you don't need a super long lead and i didn't want it to shave as much weight as uh, shave off as much weight as possible so i shortened that up a little bit there it's the same peach 2.0 solid pin connector and i got rid of the camera holder that tpu camera holder thing of course for the Mobile 7 and I just glued in the hot glued the uh, camera here onto the frame. I did scuff up the plastic here uh, on the ducts so that the glue has something to grab onto. So I just used a little like, X-Acto knife and scratched it up so that the glue won't easily give. And you see, this thing is flexible. You can see I'm, I'm flexing it around, no problem. It could take some crashes and... It's totally fine. I mean, unless you really crash it hard, which is going to probably break a lot more than the camera, you have other things to worry about. This is going to be fine. And of course, I just wanted to send a whip it so I've got a very you know, shallow angle here. I think on this print, it's an 11 degree angle. I um, I don't know if uh, anyone wants even a shallower angle, but this seemed to be fine for the Insta360 Go 2. Anyway, yeah, it fits in totally fine it's in right here like so and what I do here is I just made it tall enough so that it would hold the camera in but you, you don't want it touching the flight controller so I just have it barely off of the flight controller you can kind of see there 
so that it has a little bit of wiggle room and that prevents any kind of jello showing up in the video. If you push it all the way down onto the flight controller, you'll probably get some little bit of vibrations and some jello, but this does not have any jello in any of the flights I had. Um, I did adjust the PIDs on this. I will link my PIDs in the video description, but keep in mind I have them set at the probably the limit of this particular build here. So if your build's a little bit off, a little bit different, you're probably going to get some hot motors. You might want to back off those numbers and lower them, um, mainly the D-gain. And um, you can hear, at least I can hear, a little bit of oscillation, um, especially at full voltage. When this is uh, at the when I first um, take off at 4.35 volts, I, I, I charge this all the way up to the max. And at the very uh, max voltage, you get at the very beginning of the flight, you get a little bit of oscillation on these PIDs, on, at least on my particular build. Um, it's like a, it doesn't really cause jello or any kind of problems, um, but it, eh, within a, you know, I think about 10, 20 seconds of the flight, the, the noises kind of go away. So I wanted to sort of keep the PIDs high so that because, because this is such a heavy setup, um, in order to have decent amount of control, uh, I wanted the pits to be as high as possible. So they're extremely high. They're like over 100 for all the gains. So uh, for if you're wondering about um, PIDs, that's very high. Uh, but for something like this with a lot of weight, you do need really high gains because it's just um, you just need a lot of authority on the, um, P the PIDs to uh, maintain control of this. Um, I also uh, changed. Well, actually, I'm, actually, I don't remember if I actually I don't remember if I changed the ESC settings, and I think it was already on. Uh, the motor timing was already set to high, um, but if it isn't on yours, uh, that's what mine's set to. So that also helps with um, you know, maintaining control of the, you know, the basically this being so super heavy. Okay, so I think I posted in my Instagram, it was 22 grams. Um, that was from memory. I don't remember exactly. Let's see how much this actually weighs. Okay, yeah, it was close. 21.55 grams. I, I, I thought it was around 21, 22 grams. So yeah, this is pretty light. Let's see the battery, the 720. <laughs> yeah, it almost weighs as much as the drone. 16.42 grams. And then the uh, go-to, of course, is the heaviest thing of all, 28.2 uh, grams. So we got the Model at 7 plus the battery. Now we're at 38 grams. And then with the uh, Insta360 Go2, we're all up weight of 64.3 grams. So yeah, this might qualify as perhaps one of the lightest uh, Cinewebs out there for your Insta360 Go2. So regarding the battery, uh, I don't know if other sizes will fit this tray. I know you're going to probably ask me, will the 660 or some of the other, they have a variety of different sticks of this um, uh, 1S, you know, with the PH 2.0 connector. So you're going to have to look at the dimensions on the product pages for those batteries. This is the one that I used, and this is the one the PIDs are tuned to. Um, I got this from Pyrodrone. I think they're like 12 bucks or 11 bucks, something like that, not, not too expensive. And I get about five minutes of flight time. If you take the battery voltage um, when it comes back up to rest to about 3.5 volts, which is, eh, you know, not, yeah, I think over the long run, it'll probably weaken the battery, you know. Um, but if you're more conservative and you want the battery to voltage to uh, come up to storage voltage at the end of your flight, um, then you can fly this for about, three and a half to four minutes, which is pretty decent for a sewn up. If you're willing to take the battery voltage lower, 3.5, 3.6 volts, you can probably get closer to five minutes on this battery, if not more, depending on how you're flying, and also your conditions. So, um, you know, it's, it's a decent amount of flight time. It's not amazing or anything like that. But again, you're dealing with a super tiny cinema. Up. And again, this is, you know, uh, mainly for you guys that are, are uh, you know okay with the video quality it's you know 1440p video quality of the insta360 Insta go to which i'm totally fine with you know it's i'm not looking for super professional 
uh, video footage if you're just looking to take this on your vacation like I did and get a little bit of um, you know cinematic uh, cinema, cinema type footage around where you're staying or you know wherever you're vacationing then this is completely acceptable in my opinion of course you know it's completely subjective but again you know I didn't get a whole lot of footage and I didn't take it to like crazy places because a lot of those crazy places had 20 to 30 mile an hour winds whenever I was there which was like okay forget that and I'm this ain't gonna fly in in uh, 30 mile an hour winds it's just doesn't have does it's so already so heavy and doesn't have the power it's just just uh, you're just not gonna be able to fly in those kind of winds so obviously you know more in it's gonna be better for indoors or very light windy conditions okay so a little bit more about the controller and the monitor and how I flew it so a while back someone on my Instagram I don't know he's just an idiot said that it's impossible to fly through FPV monitors don't try it don't be an idiot don't do that um, and I was like um, I can fly through an FPV monitor I've done it before uh, that's how I first learned how to fly FPV is through a monitor. Um, it's obviously flying through goggles is easier, but flying through a monitor is not impossible. And you, I got all of the footage from this video just flying through this monitor um, and this, using this controller. So this is a pretty overall inexpensive setup. I think this controller is like $45. $45. I think this monitor is like $80. Um, yeah, so all of this together here if you, you know if you can put together a bundle that's cheaper than this the total price for everything here on you see here in the video yeah let me know in the comments below what you have put together and you know does it have um decent video quality 1440p video quality does it have you know the stabilization of an insta360 go to you know those are those are the kind of things you know, obviously you can probably go cheaper and get something like this eishi and cinefun and this is you know only 1080p video no stabilization but yeah it's cheaper so you now yeah it's like uh, you can go cheaper but you're going to obviously sacrifice a little bit of that video quality and mostly you want that stabilization for the cinema whipping stuff that's kind of why like something like this is yeah it's it's it's, it's an interesting it's a novelty item but for you know decent Video footage at stabilization just makes a big difference, and I think it's worth it. It's worth the extra money. Anyway, so back to the monitor and the controller. So I made this little sunscreen here because obviously in Hawaii it's very sunny. And this is just leftover foam from like packaging. I don't, I don't know exactly which one this came from. I just cut some pieces here to the dimensions of the monitor and used some black cloth tape here to hold the pieces together and some velcro here um, and, and obviously to fold it up to pack it up way into the case there so I can you know travel with it put a little hole here as you can see for the um, VTX uh, antenna or I'm sorry the receiver antenna yeah yes I made it up here and then I just screw on the antenna like so and then I got a little bit of Velcro here inside with some work cloth tape, which holds the side on like so. And this works pretty well. I can see totally fine in the sun. And the obviously the black it does not reflect, although the screen reflects. And then um, in my Instagram video or my Instagram post, I or I think it was a video. I showed you this setup where I put magnets on here, and I had two originally, but I, I wanted to have a little bit more angle because it was a little bit too shallow it was kind of like kind of like this which is a little bit hard to see so i wanted more angle so i basically angled the magnets and yeah it's really hard to see here on both the controller side as you can see there so i just folded over the uh, vhb so that i can have a little bit more angle which which required having a third magnet to make sure that it was secure and um, wouldn't fall off. So I had a third magnet and I added a little bit of tape there just to mm, make it look a little, a little bit better and um, uh, also to help hold the magnets in case uh, it would pull off. It, I didn't have any problems with it pulling off, but I think if you left it on here at this angle, like so, it will eventually, the, the, because the, the, there's, so much, there's so much force here, as you can see, it will pull on it and over time, it might cause the magnets to pull off the VHB. 
If you're just flying for you know other, you know short sessions like I did, five minutes, ten minutes, etc., I didn't have any problems with just sitting here like this. And you can see I have you know decent amount of um, angle there. And yes, the I have full control of the sticks here with this setup, no problem. Uh, does not get in the way, and that's what I kind of also I cut off a little bit of the foam there so that my fingers would not get in the way of the screen. It does make the radio front heavy like this, so you do feel like you're supporting the radio more with your fingers, but you know, this is this whole setup super late anyway. It's really not that big of a deal. I still have access to all the switches, no problem. Yeah, so this is this is what I flew with. And you know, to the uh, internet uh, experts out there saying that certain certain things are impossible. Um, yeah, this is totally possible to do. I know lots of people that can fly through FPV monitors, and actually, it's the only way they can fly because almost no goggles will work for them. So I don't know who these people think they are. They 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 know that uh, no one can fly through a monitor. It's um, just not true. Anyway, oh, also someone asked me about this thing. So this is my gimbal protector for this radio. This obviously is, this is not a, did not come with the radio. Um, this is just uh, two pieces of foam that came on like some toy radio controller. And then I took another piece of foam, obviously some packaging, cut it with some scissors and used some welder's glue to glue the two, all well, three pieces of foam together. And this acts as my stick protectors and then I changed the um, stick ends here to these black ones this is actually from a Radio Master T8 because I, I like the black ones better than the silver ones uh, just with the feel I think they're the same ones that are on the jumper I don't like the ones that the, the stock ones from Beta FPV these feel better so I just swapped them out and so those are all the modifications and I also made a video on how I modified this one to light, um, uh, Express LRS so yeah, if you're, I think that should cover everything in terms of all the questions I had about the various things that I've showed previously in other Instagram posts and videos. And yeah, if you want to, um, you know, make a really super cheap and light cinema, it's not very loud, uh, pretty good flight times with that battery, and pretty good video footage, in my opinion. Yeah, let's try, try this out. Um, Obviously, you, there's a lot of other ways you can get to a tiny zoom up like this. Um, there's also the Flywoo, uh, for example, the Baby Nano, if you don't want the, the prop guards. It's also 40 millimeters with a 0802.5 motor, I believe. So a little bit different setup. I mean, that one's a little bit heavier than this one as well. But that can carry the uh, go-to no problem as well with the 720 battery. You get a similar flight time in that one. It's a pretty similar setup overall compared to this one. And don't forget uh, the Insta360 Go 2 still on sale uh, with my link. You get the extra, you get the discount, of course, and the extra goodies, the ND filters, which you'll want to get, and the lens guards. And then uh, the link to the STL is down in the uh, video description. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. If you guys have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.